Hey everyone, it's Nixie. Today's video will be covering my 15 tips and tricks to help you get started learning Escape from Tarkov and improving your gameplay for beginners and returning players. If this is your first time on my channel, thank you for checking out my video. I focus on making informative content for the games I am playing. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and leave a comment below. It really helps out the channel. If you're not already subscribed, hit the subscribe button and click the bell for notifications when new videos go live. To my returning subscribers, thank you so much for joining me again. It means the world. Some of these tips may seem a bit obvious, but let's assume you've never opened Tarkov and you have no idea where to get started. If you have played, I still urge you to listen to the tips because maybe it's something you haven't heard yet or thought of, but if you feel you don't need a specific one, I have included the timestamps in the description box below for navigating the video. Tip number one, set up your game, learn your key bindings, and figure out if you need to use the PostFX system. Let's go over the different key bindings. EFT has a lot of specific actions that need to be bound to shortcuts. This can be a little overwhelming for new players, but we'll go over the big ones together. Be sure to adjust your mouse sensitivity to fit your playstyle, and remember that any of these key bindings can be changed to make gameplay more comfortable for you. A few I would suggest learning. The lean left and lean right keybind will allow you to peek corners quickly. However, if you want to stay lean to hold an angle, the smooth lean keybinds will allow you to do so. The switch scope keybinds will allow you to cycle through various optics on your weapon. The change scope magnification keybind not only allows you to change the amount of zoom on variable zoom optics, but it will allow you to change the reticle on many of the red dot sights. The free look keybind allows you to move your character's head without changing the direction your body is in. This is useful to look to either side while running and to check your sight lines while on the move. The Toggle NVG keybind not only turns on NVG if you have it attached to your helmet, but also toggles face shields up and down. The Mumble keybind and Open Mumble drop-down binding allow you to use the in-game voice comms. Marvelous. These can be fun to play around with, but I don't oh, recommend using here. them seriously, as more often than not, they will simply get you killed by giving away your position. Check Time and Check Time and Extracts allow you to see how much time is left on the current raid and the names of the extracts you have available to you. Keep in mind the extracts with a question mark are not guaranteed exits. Toggle Tactical Device and Switch Tactical Device Mode will toggle all lasers and flashlights on your weapon on and off and switch through the various modes they have available. Quick Weapon Reload will allow you to reload slightly faster by dropping your current used magazine onto the ground rather than replacing it into your vest. If you use this, make sure to remember where you reloaded so you can pick your magazine back up later. Check Ammo will play an animation to check the ammunition left in your current magazine. Fire Mode swaps your weapons between any available fire rates, single fire, burst fire, and fully automatic. Check Fire Mode will allow you to check which fire mode you are on without the audible click of swapping modes. Walk Pose and Previous Walk Pose allow you to change your crouch height. This is very useful when peeking over cover. Sidestepping allows you to move in and out of cover at a set distance quickly, similar to peeking with the lean keys, but allowing you more movement out of cover if needed. This can also be used to roll onto your side while prone, so you can peek under some types of cover. The slot keys allow you to bind objects inside your pockets or chest rig to use quickly. Anything that is usable and fits into your pockets and rigs can be bound this way. This includes weapons, grenades, stimulants, medkits, bandages, food, and drink. Scope elevation up and adjust scope down. Change the zero of your optic of choice, be it red dot sight or magnified optic. This changes the point of aim on your optic to a further distance so you will not have to compensate your shots to hit your target. Finally, Hold Breath steadies your weapon while aiming down sights. This is important for increasing the accuracy of your shots. It's good practice to do so whenever you have the ability to in firefights. Next up, we need to go over the settings. In the Game tab, you can change your FOV slider to whatever you are most comfortable with, as well as adjust the level of head bobbing. I suggest turning this down as low as possible because it can be a bit intense and makes it harder to spot things while on the move. In the Graphics tab, your resolution is pretty self-explanatory. I recommend setting it to the native resolution of your monitor. For screen mode, most players will want to be in full screen for the best performance, but I am set to borderless so I am able to seamlessly tab in and out of my game for stream. If you need to tab out to check maps or anything else, however, I definitely suggest running the game in borderless for ease. I don't suggest using the overall graphics quality slider and instead going through your options and adjusting them manually for the most performance for your PC. I can't tell you what to pick because it varies vastly between different PC builds. 
If you have GeForce experience or a similar program, it can help you in selecting the settings that are best for your GPU. The PostFX settings allow you to drastically change the visual aspect of Escape from Tarkov. This is something that you should experiment with on your own time as each of these settings will have different effects from my monitor to yours. Sound settings are pretty self-explanatory. The only thing we really need to talk about is the binaural sound. This is the new sound setting that changes EFT's sound between its original design and the new current design. I suggest trying both and figuring out which one you like more because there are definitely pros and cons to both. Tip number two, offline raids. Offline raids are an excellent tool everyone can benefit from. It allows you to go into a customizable raid with no other players on any map of your choosing without any risk to your gear. But the downside is you don't gain XP and you don't get to keep the loot you find. It can be used to learn a map for the first time, locating extracts, learning loot spawns, scav pathing locations, or even changes to a map before diving into an online raid. You can also select to spawn new and old scav bosses to help you get a handle on fighting them. Everything you can learn in offline directly leads into my next tip. Tip number three, learn your maps, routes, and extracts. Something I did when I first started was to keep a physical or virtual map of the current raid I was on, whether it was on my second monitor or my phone, so if I got lost or I couldn't find the extracts, I still knew where to go. At one point, I had even printed out maps so I could write down spawns, scav paths, PvP areas, and task locations so I knew where I was going and I could start making a waypoint system in my head. Obviously, now there are maps available everywhere with markers for everything. But when I first started playing, there weren't as many detailed maps or many available at all. Once you have learned the maps and feel more comfortable during PMC runs, you can start to plan the routes you want to run. The exact path you will choose will not always be the same because every map has multiple spawn locations, so use your path as a way of marking key locations you want to visit on your way through the map rather than a designated route. If you are looking for PMC engagements, try to push the high traffic PvP area closest to your spawn while keeping in mind that people can spawn behind or around you, so having situational awareness is key. Learning how to run from those high traffic areas while moving between cover to make an effective getaway is a great asset as well. If PvP makes you uncomfortable or you feel you aren't ready, that's okay. It is possible to strategically move across the map to avoid engagements against both PMC and scavs. This could be helpful if you need a task item or objective, you have taken damage and want to survive the raid, or you just aren't ready for full PvP yet. If this is the case, I suggest avoiding heavy combat or waiting for it to subside before moving in for a few key reasons. A healing target is easier to kill. Looting players are distracted. Destroyed limbs cause damage to the player's entire body. Repaired limbs mean less overall health. And if their armor is already damaged when you engage them, it only increases your chances of winning. Just for reference, using a Serve 12 on a limb will leave it with 80 to 90% of its max HP for the duration of the raid, as well as having the ability to fix fractured limbs. Whereas using a CMS on a limb will only leave it with 45 to 60% of its max HP for the duration of the raid, but will not fix any fractures in comparison. So weigh your options on which surgical kit you want to use in raids. Tip number four, utilize your scav. In Escape from Tarkov, you can choose either to enter a raid as your PMC or to enter a raid as a scavenger or scav for short. Scavs spawn later in the raid, have pre-made kits with a random assortment of gear and loot they spawn with, but cannot do task objectives. They can, however, find items you require for various collection tasks like getting found in raid morphine for the therapist or Yushanka hats for Ragman. Scav runs are incredibly useful as they allow you to enter an online raid with other players. The AI scavs are not hostile to you provided you do not shoot another scav, and you get to keep any loot you manage to escape with if you have room for it in your stash. I definitely suggest making sure you have room before going on a run. On a typical scav run, I recommend picking up ammo that you cannot currently buy and also trying to load up on as much usable gear as you can. Later on, you can use your scav to focus solely on finding items for your tasks, building out your hideout, or just making money. Tip number five, know how and when to loot. In Tarkov, looting can be just as dangerous as a firefight, so learning when it's safe to pick over your kills or search that container in the open quickly is key to your survival. 
When looting, holding control and left clicking an item will automatically move it over to your inventory. Or dragging the item on top of a backpack or chest rig will move it into the first available space the item will fit. You can also hold alt and left click to automatically equip an item onto your character as long as you have the free space. Clicking or pressing down on the scroll wheel, otherwise known as middle mouse button, will allow you to examine an unidentified object as well as fold a weapon stock in the inventory screen. Searching gives you attention skill XP, looting an item, even if you toss it, gives you perception skill XP, and both attention and perception will raise your memory and charisma skills. I suggest looting everything from a container even if you don't keep it if you want to maximize your XP gains. Knowing when to loot comes down to knowing if you are safe or not. Something you'll hear a lot is that there's always one more, so be sure to check your sight lines, wait and listen for nearby footsteps or someone shuffling around the corner before you go to loot. If a body isn't safe and you don't feel comfortable looting it, don't. But keep in mind that just tapping a body will give you some experience even if you don't loot anything off of it. Tip number six, balancing your weight. Escape from Tarkov is a complex weight system. Everything in your inventory and equipped on your character adds weight. The more weight you are carrying, the slower you'll move. You'll take damage when jumping over normal height objects such as off stairs or the side of ramps. Your stamina runs out faster and potentially won't recover unless you stop moving completely and you will make more noise. For these reasons, having more loot isn't always the best plan if you wanna stay mobile and be able to quickly run from fights. In the early game, a good way to keep yourself supplied with decent sized backpacks is stacking scav bags, burkits, and day packs together in your inventory during raids. This can lead to being overweight quickly, but if you play safely, it's a valid strategy. Tip number seven, learn the value of items. Everything in Tarkov has a monetary value, but it's worth more to some traders than it is to others. If you aren't sure who will pay more, I suggest checking all of the traders to see which one will buy it for the most. Once you are past level 10, use the flea market to check if it's worth selling there over the traders. Keep in mind that everything you list on the flea market has a listing fee, so something that appears to sell for slightly more on the flea could in fact net you less money overall if the listing fee is too high. I know it seems overwhelming at first, but eventually knowing which items to sell to which trader will just become second nature. Tip number 8. Play slow and play safe. If you want to survive your raids and complete your tasks, then slow down and take each raid at your own pace. Remember that just because an area appears safe and clear doesn't necessarily mean it is. Take a moment to listen and look closer at the sight lines before pushing through. When moving through a building, make sure to clear your corners or you're liable to end up shot in the back. If you can take the time to sit in an advantageous sight line, do it. Watching open high traffic areas from a safe location will help you understand the movement of the other PMCs as well as lets you listen more carefully to the sounds being made across the map. Don't sprint unless your safety requires it. Sprinting in Tarkov is very loud. This not only alerts others to your location from a much further distance, but also muffles the sound you hear around you making it easier for enemies to get the drop on you. Don't kill scavs unless you need to. Scavs are a great early warning system for approaching enemy PMCs. Attacking a scav can alert other nearby scavs and draw them towards you. And remember, we covered this earlier, but if you're a scav and on a scav run and you attack a scav, it will cause other scavs to become hostile towards you. Tip number nine, prioritize your survival. Surviving a raid gives you a 1.5 times XP bonus, whereas dying gives you normal XP and causes you to lose any items you've found in raid that aren't in your secure container and any gear you brought in. If you don't feel confident moving towards a firefight or pushing through a high traffic area, don't do it. Sometimes it's worth not taking the shot to give away your position because you could end up being outgunned. Tip number 10, know your ammo and choose the right kind for your objective. Ammo in Tarkov is far more important than whatever gun you are using. A fully modified gun with terrible ammo won't kill a heavily armored target any faster. Use the wiki's ammo charts to determine which ammo is best for you. Penetration and armor damage will tell you how quickly a round will take down a heavily armored target while high base damage is going to kill an unarmored target faster. If you can't afford to buy the best ammo for your weapon, the second best is usually a passable alternative at a much cheaper cost. If you're running low on money and need to gear up try to budget your guns and not your ammo. Tip number 11, learn to build a kit that works well for you. Having a kit you are comfortable with and can easily assemble will help lower your stress and reduce gear fear. The first step is to find a gun you like using and can easily attain at your level either from scavs or from traders in the flea market. 
A few early game recommendations are SKSs, shotguns, AKs, and SMGs like the PP-19 or the MP5. Use attachments you find when you first start modifying guns rather than buying overpriced things off of the flea market, but remember, ammo is still more important than those attachments. Only kit out a gun you enjoy using rather than one you've never tested before and then make a small stockpile of them and have them ready to go. This is a tip that I give frequently and I personally used myself because it made the loss felt when dying in raid feel so much less terrible. Try to run the best armor available to you if you find yourself dying too often. Armor in Tarkov is expensive but can be worth the money to help you survive. Tip number 12. Heal in your stash. Healing in the post-raid screen directly translates money into healing, but you gain no XP from it. So try to remember to either heal in stash or in raid for the bonus XP. Something I do is I save partially used meds I get out of raids and I use them to heal in my stash. Tip number 13. Prioritize tasks. All of the traders in Escape from Tarkov offer tasks for you to complete. These tasks range from killing scavs and looting their shotguns all the way to dehydrating yourself for 5 minutes and staying alive through the ordeal. While some tasks can be a bit of a hassle to complete, I still recommend using them as a guideline to tell you what maps to play on, as each completed task rewards not only XP and trader reputation, but can also reward money, guns, meds, or even unlocks new items for purchase from the traders. Tip number 14. Utilize your hideout. The hideout is your PMC's home. It's where you can craft new items from the things you find in raid and also helps you in a variety of other ways. Leveling your intelligence center shortens the cooldown of your scav raids allowing you to recoup losses faster. You can craft some items needed for tasks at the laboratory as anything made in the hideout counts as found in raid. Certain areas of the hideout also increase your maximum energy, the rate at which you recover energy and hydration when not in raid, and increase your XP gains. The hideout also gives you access to the firing range, which allows you to quickly and easily test your new guns. It is, however, an investment in time and money and is not in any way required to progress through the game. Tip number 15. Change things up to enjoy the game. I know that everyone jokes you aren't supposed to have fun playing Tarkov, but that couldn't be further from the truth. The game is hard to learn and hard to play, but it should still be fun. I always tell people to remember you're fighting an uphill battle, and sometimes that can feel overwhelming. If you're having bad raids and can't seem to get out successfully but still want to keep playing, use scav runs to recoup some of your stash. If you're getting too frustrated playing, take a break. The game will be here when you get back. If you struggle playing alone, find friends to play with. If you can't find anyone to play with through your resources, stop by my Twitch and join my Discord. We have a community who love to teach and help out. Those are my 15 tips and tricks for learning Escape from Tarkov. I hope the tips I've given you in this video can help you in your future raids. If you would like me to make a video going into more detail on anything I covered here, or any other aspect of Escape from Tarkov, please let me know in the comments below or in my Discord. I would love to hear from you. As with all EFT videos, please remember that Tarkov is in a constant state of development and basically everything is subject to change without notice. I will do my best to keep this video and description box updated, but if it is no longer correct, it's unfortunately out of my control. Thanks for watching. If you made it to the end of my video, leave a comment letting me know what you guys want to see next. Don't forget to follow my Twitch, Instagram, and Twitter to connect with me elsewhere. The links are in the description box below. And as always, don't let anyone tell you you don't need more loot. Happy hoarding.